then I forgot to press the recording button. <sighs> I'm such a great YouTuber. Anyway, <laughs> hi! My name is Carla de Guzman. I'm a romance writer from the Philippines. And happy end of March! Okay, fine. So not end, end of March. There's We still have a week officially before March ends. But, you know, you can already tell that we're really getting deep into summer because it's so hot. Like... It's like stand outside and start sweating hot here in the Philippines. So you just know summer is around the corner. So today we're going to talk about the books that I loved and enjoyed this March. And all while putting on my everyday makeup. Because everyday makeup is fun. If you watched my February uh, Get Ready With Me and recap video, I said that I thought I was going through a reading slump. And you know, I was feeling, uh, I was feeling pretty bummed about it. So when that happens, I usually pick up a book in a series that I'm reading, which is the Kate Daniels series by Ilona Andrews. I love Kate Daniels, um, mostly because of Kate and Curran. Kate mostly, because Kate is like, Kate is me on a Friday night. She's just so freaking tired of everything, but you know, she needs to get stuff done. She just wants a nap. The girl just wants a nap and nobody's letting her have a nap. And I just finished Magic Shifts this month and, you know, solid addition to the series. I I believe this is the eighth, the eighth book in the series and, you know, we're getting into, um, oh, I can't say anything without spoiling things, but it's a great addition to the series. I'm really excited to dive into the next book because I think currently the series ends at 10, so I'm almost there. So yeah, Kiss and Cry by Mina Vies Guerra. First of all, that cover is so adorable. Like, the height difference, the hockey uniform, the way he's sort of looking down at her and she's like, yeah, I know I'm so gorgeous. It's so good. Like, okay, of course I'm not surprised that it's a Mina book and it's great, but Kiss and Cry, um, first of all, it's about a hockey player and a, an, a former ice skating champion, which it's not... That is not a common job to have in the Philippines where literally I'm just sitting here and my ass is sweating. <laughs> okay, it's never about how funny it is that they they work on the ice from this country. Um, it's more of acknowledging that there is a lot of, there's a lack of opportunity here. Um, it's a common thing that you hear that, uh, let's say this person is into this kind of thing, but they have to go somewhere else to do that thing because there's just not enough opportunity here or this person wants to pursue this but can't because nobody's doing it here so they go somewhere else. Um, it's something we hear time and time again and I think it was very interesting that Mina explored this especially adding to that the I would say the conflict of the love interest Ram wanting to move back to America. So. It's that plus the lack of opportunity here. Then she added the romance between Ram and Cal. So all of that comes into play and I think it was very masterfully done. Um, there are scenes where Ram is just walking in Manila and he asks Manila to be kind. And those are things that you kind of understand living here. And Mina did it so well. She And then she paired it all with food. So like, don't read this book if you're hungry because you will get hungry. And it's Ram and Cal's journey together to I like that their I like that their big thing was that they didn't want to factor each other in. They didn't want to admit that they wanted to factor each other in. Um which is was which I think is a very mature thing to do. Normally you wouldn't hear that from people here. The final decision of whether Ram stays or Ram goes is both dependent and independent of Cal. Oh, it's so hard to talk about this and not spoil things, but I I told you in Feb that I was really looking forward to reading this, these books and they have not disappointed me so far. So if you can pick up a copy of Kiss and Cry, I guarantee you will love it. You know, my fingers are too big to put an inner corner highlight, but whatever. So after, um, after I read Kiss and Cry, I... I finally got the courage and finished The Art of Forgery by Noah Charney. I mentioned this in the Feb video as well, I think. 
but that I was, you know, struggling with this book, having a hard time with it. And finally, one Saturday night, I was just hanging out at home. And then I finally, I finally just sat down and hate read the whole thing. This is what happens when I read things, my guys. I'm not I'm not used to it anymore. I, I think almost 80 or 90% of the books I read now are written by women. So when I finally read something by a guy and he says something like, there is no such thing as a female forger i'm like Ugh, how dare you how dare you and and because i also it's also because i told myself that i would finish art of forgery before i dove into the symphony of seduction and um my concern about this book is that it's also written by a man um yeah that's all I'm gonna say about it. I have secured a copy of The Devil's Daughter by Lisa Claypass. And may I just say that Wes Ravenel is probably my favorite, my most favorite Lisa Claypass hero of all time. And I feel like it's been a long time coming for Wes and I'm just so happy for him. But uh, my issue, my issue with the audiobook is I didn't love the voice that the narrator chose for Wes. It might be because she already used her sexier voices for the other for the other lead guys. Wes is still my favorite character. He's just he just a, there's just something about a salt of the earth guy who is like built like a house and who likes kids that just gets me. It gets me so hard. And every time Phoebe was watching him and imagine and like lusting after him, I was like, mm -hmm. Yeah, girl, I understand. I feel ya. While I am proud to say that Wes Ravenel is my favorite Lisa Claypas hero. A lot of the plot happens in the second half of the story and you miss, you sort of miss what Wes and Phoebe were like before. You kind of read that part and have to remember like, why are these two together again? Why are they, um, what are they trying to do again? Because things were moving at a very quick pace. Like the pacing felt weird so that's why while Wes is my favorite it's not my favorite of the Lisa Claypass books it was all right it was all right I would rate it like a like a three over five so not bad not exactly great so I'm very neutral about this whole thing hmm, interesting ladies and gentlemen I cannot tell you how much how much I enjoy Star Wars. I feel like Padme is one of those characters that deserves a lot, deserved a lot more than she got. Um, and this book was written by E.K. Johnston and mixed feelings again. Um, damn it. I love the, the dynamic of Padme and her handmaidens. I love how important it, her outfits were just, her outfits and her makeup were just as important as what she was doing for the day. Um, her relationship with her handmaidens was amazing, like reading that kind of dynamic was great and it makes a lot of sense after you've watched um, The Phantom Menace and The Clone Wars. But, see I, st I always got a but. This may be a super stupid thing to complain about but I don't see the Padme that falls in love with Anakin. So that just may be my the romance writer in me talking, but if you read watching the first movie, reading the Queen Shadow, and then watching the second movie, you have no idea why why in God's no nope, why in the Maker's Blue Galaxy you would Padme fall in love with Anakin. It's just not in her plans at all. If you read the book, nothing, nothing. There's no mention about her being possibly open to falling in love with someone, her even thinking about it. Um she thinks of Qui-Gon Jinn more than she does of Anakin. She has a mission to save Anakin's mother, but he doesn't really think of Anakin. He doesn't, she doesn't explicitly say why she decided to do that. And I feel like that's just a missed opportunity because um, on the worst side of it, you think that Padme as a character just had no agency when it came to falling in love with Anakin. And that's just the saddest part because Padme is a badass character. She is the mother of Leia Organa, okay? She is the biological mother of Leia Organa and Luke Skywalker. And she has this amazing legend around her and they couldn't give her some, some like agency at this falling in love thing at all. 
were I to write a Padme Amidala book, it would be all about, it would be that. It would be, it would be Padme, you know, thinking about falling in love and opening herself up to that. Because, so even if, even if the whole romance with Anakin feels like, feels like a whirlwind thing, something she couldn't control, it makes more sense than reading a book about how she was a great senator, a serious senator, a serious politician, and then only to have it end the way it did. Mm, and I feel like there's a possibility that they might release more books with Sabe as the lead, but I would prefer more books with Padme. So I think this was a great effort from E.K. Johnston, but I don't know. I I think I think I just expect more because I read romance, and Padme's story essentially ends with a romance. That's just me. The book that I'm currently reading slash listening to right now is Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole. Ah, oh, guys, this book, it's so much fun. Okay, you know, um, I never really knew that I would ever pick up a Naruto reference until it happened. The main plot point of Can't Escape Love is that Reggie can't fall asleep without listening to Gus, Gus's voice. And she kind of strikes a deal with him where um they talk to he talks to her on the phone to lull her to sleep it's hard to explain like how how bad it is for your heart when when a guy intentionally intentionally speaks like that hi So when it happens to Reggie and Can't Escape Love, I just felt it. I felt it in my heart. I think it's great that, you know, Alyssa's kind of giving a nod to this side of the universe. Um, but <laughs> interestingly enough, the one thing that I didn't pick up right away when she said was salad spinner. You know, I can't speak for what it feels like to have a character that needs a wheelchair to move around. But, you know, representation is always great. And I'm just so happy with this book so far. And my, some of my friends are already talking about rereading it because it's that much fun. So if you were looking for something kind of light and quick and easy, I, I definitely recommend picking this up. And that cover is gorgeous. I always love a, you know, a real, a real photograph on a cover to think about when I'm reading the book. So that's it for my March reads for this month. Um, there's still a week left, so maybe I might squeeze something else in, but I highly doubt it. I am going to the US in April 1. Uh, if you have any recommendations for places I should visit while I'm in Washington, DC, I would, I would really appreciate it because um, the main reason I need to go to the States is because I need to buy bras. My bra size does not exist in the Philippines. <laughs> Any other recommendations for things I should do while I'm there would be highly appreciated. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Um, if you're interested in reading any of these books, the link should be down. The link should be down below. Um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next week. Bye.